How you guys doing? I wanted to talk about some uh, really quickly. I have enough today to drop in my spirit, but I want to continue what I was talking about on our last, when I last got on here. The answer in the midst of crisis. When there's crisis throughout the Bible, there's only, there's only, a, there's only a certain recipe that to every crisis that has plagued mankind as far as from the biblical perspective. And so with all of what's going on, we're definitely in crisis mode in our nation. Um, it, it, we are in the greatest crisis, I believe, in American in history, honestly, greater than World War II. I mean, greater than the time when uh, World War II, greater than the Civil War. And so I believe that we're in a, a time of great shaking and all that stuff. But so in the midst of this, that God has a remedy uh, for 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 his church to participate with him in for the, for there to be a shift and for there to be change. Um, and it's always been the same. And I want to take you to the story of Nineveh. And I talked about this on my interview with Charisma. So if you haven't been on my website, go on my website, look at my interview with Charisma. You also can get my book, The Final Trumpet. We talk about this in the book, The Final Trumpet. But there's always been, God has always has a, had a recipe for crisis uh, in Joel, in Nineveh. Joel was in the context of before the Babylonian captivity, the nation had been completely devastated by a plague, destroyed the crops, destroyed everything. It was basically, it would basically be like a, 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 a nuclear uh, economic holocaust. I mean, it was just basically the economy shut down, locusts destroyed everything. And Joel sends up in the midst of this crisis and sets certain things. He talks about the day of the Lord, the return of the Lord. And then he calls, he calls for prayer, fasting, and repentance. And we see this blueprint throughout the old and even going into the New Testament when there is times of uh, of great crisis where judgment may be upon a nation or there's crisis or war or uh, just uh, devastation, that God calls his people to partner with him in prayer, fasting, and repentance of humbling themselves. And we see that Second Chronicles 7, 14, one of my favorite verses of intercession, um, that God said, if my people will call by and will humble themselves and seek my faith, I will heal the land my people. He doesn't put that on the world. That's not the world. It's not the world responsibility in this crisis to come up with an answer. They're not. Jesus is the answer and he put his answer in the church. And his answer to this is that his people would humble themselves and pray. And so we really believe this is one of our mandates of the hour is just calling the church to this. But no, when Nineveh was under the judgment and Nineveh was going to be destroyed, God sent a prophet Jonah they called uh, re for repentance of that nation. And these unbelievers, these heathen, this wicked nation got in sackcloth and ashes, which is a sign of humility and, and, and uh, repentance. And then they also began to fast. And they and, and God spared the land, spared the nation, poured out his spirit. It was great revival. And so I believe that's the, the, the hope of America. I believe that's the, the hope of the hour is that the church, that pastors, that leaders in the body of Christ would grab hold, would hear the trumpet's call of God to gather their people, to gather their people, to, to forget about um, a ministry, forget about your own personal ministry, forget about all that stuff, that your heart would be fixed on there being awakening and revival in this nation and that God would turn, hold back his hands of judgment, that God would pour out his spirit on our cities, that, that, that he would end the violence, that he would cause this plague to be lifted off of our land. That is the focus of this hour, that souls will be saved, that, that there will be a mighty rending of the heavens like there was in the rest revival, like there was in times past, like there was in Brownsville, like there was in different times and seasons, Azusa. And that, that is the only hope. And so my prayer for the church in this hour, that, that the church would hear the sound of God. I believe one of the greatest things that God is prophesying, that he's saying over America, is he calling America to a prayer, but he's calling the intercessors, he's calling us to humble ourselves, to get on our faces, to get off Facebook, to stop watching the news because it's negative anyway. It's not going to change. It's going to be negative when you look at it tomorrow. To, to get on our face, to fast, to pray, to gatherings of prayer all across the nation, to humble ourselves like 2 Corinthians 7 14 says, and to ask God to heal this nation. That's the only hope. There's no other hope. That is the only hope for our nation. And that the church would arise like Daniel and that we would be a bold church on fire and in love with Jesus like never before. Burning fire for him. Just completely in love and, and manifesting his glory and his presence. So I, 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 I bless you with that today.